Hi, good morning Vince. My name is Naomi Peter. I'm your invigilator for the OET speaking session on the 3rd of April 2020. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name for the record, please? My full name is Vince Hardy. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is 2127781. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a nurse. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. Tell me about the greatest challenge you have faced in your nursing career. When I was new in my nursing career, it took me a significant amount of time to complete patient assessments. It seemed like no matter what, it would take forever for me to fill out the patient information on the assessments. Being a perfectionist, I would spend too much time on the details, and would end up getting behind on all my other daily tasks, because of the amount of time I was spending on the assessments. In order to overcome this, I had to take a step back, and while I still recognized that these details were important, I moved more quickly through the entire routine of collecting the information, so I could balance my daily tasks and better care for my patients. Do you have nursing management or leadership goals? Right now, I do not have any clear management goals. However, I am very interested in learning about management and leadership, and would be interested in any committees that I could participate in and learn. I have lots of ideas, and would love to be in a brainstorming group, and I am very interested in the management dynamics of the organization. I feel that I need to focus on my duties right now, but I am definitely open to joining leadership groups to learn and meet new people. How many patients is a full workload for you? This is a really good question, and it really depends on the situation and the acuity of the patients that I am caring for. I feel that one of my strongest skill sets is assessing the patients I am caring for, and measuring my capacity, and when I do this, if I feel that I am becoming overloaded, I will communicate this to the charge nurse, so they can help redistribute, or offer help of a CNA. I would not ask for help, unless it was absolutely needed, and I only do so, when I feel like, I cannot properly care for patients who are in my care. Tell me about a time when you cared for a patient whose values or beliefs were different from your own. I have been a nurse for many years, and I am aware that I have to constantly stay aware of my biases, both conscious and unconscious, in order to ensure I am providing the best care and customer service to my patients. The most applicable example that comes to mind is when I was working in an outpatient job slash gyne clinic, and a transgender woman came in to see the doctor for hormone treatment. The name and information on the schedule did not indicate that the patient was transgender, so I was a bit caught off guard when I went to the waiting room to call the patient back, as she very much still looked like the opposite gender. However, I immediately checked my biases and ensured that I was treating this woman with the care and respect that I give all my patients. How do you handle a patient whose family complains a lot? Being admitted to a hospital, a patient is probably under a lot of pressure, stress and physical pain. It is very natural for them or their family to feel anxious. That makes them worried, and they end up complaining about every little thing. So, if I find myself in such situations, I try to be calm and patient, and provide them with the best service. If I am unable to provide what they are asking for, I inform them about the same in a firm, but polite manner. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there's anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can look at the card during the test, 
but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you. Your preparation time is over. You can now start your role play. Don't worry, if I stop you when the time is up. Good morning. I am Vince Hardy, one of the registered nurses in this hospital. How can I help you today? Hi, good morning, nurse. I am here to know about throat swab. Okay, before going further, how may I address you? My name is Naomi Petter. You can call me Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Could you please explain to me your concern? Sure. Actually, I am here for my daughter. She has been having frequent sore throats. Hence the doctor suggested to do a throat swab. And I am really unaware about the same. Could you please guide me? Yes, it's my pleasure. Throat swab is a minor test, which is being done in a laboratory. During the test, a sample from the throat is collected with a cotton wool bud. Okay. And how long would it take? As I mentioned, it is a simple procedure, and it takes only a few seconds. My daughter is just seven years old, and she hasn't experienced a throat swab before. So, I am eager to know how it would be feeling. Being a mother, I totally realize your question. But there's nothing to be alarmed about the test. After the test, she may feel some sort of discomfort, or minor gagging. So, it's better to stay with her throughout the procedure, to make her much more comfortable. All right, I understand that. However, I don't think, just taking a little bit of throat swab can show, what is wrong with my daughter. Yes, your question is reasonable, and I can explain in detail about it. The throat swab, 
which is taken can be analyzed in a specialized setting in the lab, which could help to identify the bacteria, as well as the infection present. Okay. A throat culture can also help the doctor to determine which antibiotic will work best for your daughter's condition. That's great. Now, I hope it's clear to you. Yes, it's clear for me now. Great. By the way, I would like to know if your child uses mouthwash. No. My daughter do not use a mouthwash. Perhaps, may I know why you need to know about this? Yes, of course. It is because a mouthwash is an agent that can kill the bacteria and it may compromise the throat swab result. Oh. I see. Yes, anyway, thank you for the information. Nurse, my concern is, what will happen if the throat swab shows my daughter has something serious? Naomi, please listen to me carefully. A normal or negative result means no bacteria or other germs that may cause a sore throat were found. Okay. Whereas, an abnormal or positive result means bacteria or other germs that can cause a sore throat were seen on the throat swab. All right. Nevertheless, the test can provide great insight to the doctor and can provide the best treatment accordingly. Okay. Naomi, I am not the authoritative one to talk about the results and its impacts. As I said, the throat swab is just a test to identify the cause, and thereafter, the GP will provide your daughter with the most appropriate treatment. Try not to worry. All right. All right, nurse. Anyway, may I know? When I can get the test result? It takes around two days to get the result. Will it take that long? Yes, usually it takes. And what after that? I appreciate your curiosity. After receiving your daughter's result, you can have a follow-up appointment for your daughter with the GP. Sure, nurse. All right. So, shall I proceed to take the sample, please? Yes, you may please. Thank you for your cooperation and understanding. That's the end of your oat speaking role play. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.